Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the great and powerful Zilla and I thought it was about time I brought you another World of Tanks video. This is the American Tier 9 Experimental T-54E1 tank. On American tanks, if you see a T in front of it, it is a prototype and an experimental tank. So, what do we got? <clears throat> well, let's talk about the T-51 series. This thing was built on the chassis of the M48 Patton tank the early version, the one with the gasoline engine, not the diesel, okay? If it had a diesel, this would be open and there would be vents and the diesel exhaust would come out the back. This is a petrol engine, okay? And in this case, the exhaust is vented out of the top, but I've also seen them where they have the mufflers on the fenders and the exhaust comes out the side. So, <clears throat> what do we got? Well, in 1950s, the United States saw what the French were doing with their auto loaders, and you know, monkey see, monkey do. They decided to give it a shot. You know, obviously, having an auto loader on a tank is a pretty enticing idea. You've got manpower shortages. You can go with a three-man tank, and uh, yeah, and, you know, it's, you save a crew member that way. But honestly. Having operated on the M48, I'm telling you, you need four crew members just to maintain the vehicle. Um, but in the 1950s, they were experimenting with this. And in 1951 through 1957, they built two of these. Uh, well, actually, they built a little bit, a few more, uh, just to goof around with and, and check it out and see what it could do. <clears throat> Operationally, it was, you know, experimentally, it was a success. It worked. Um, it had a 105 millimeter gun, the same one that was fitted to the T-29 experimental heavy tank. And uh, it was an oscillating turret with an auto loader. Now, the way they did this thing um, was they turned the gun upside down. So the opening of the breech was facing downwards. And then there was a rack with 105 rounds right up underneath the gun. And the gun, would they would, uh, like a big magazine in, in like a 45 or a Glock, okay? And it would go up and load the gun that way. Okay, so this gun is actually upside down. The the breech is facing down. Okay, now um, they messed around with this until the 1957 when the project was scrapped. In 1956, the E1 series, this one, was actually uh, canceled. But that doesn't mean that they gave up completely on this idea. And they goofed around with this uh, prototype and a couple of other ones all the way up until, you know, the 1960s. Uh, goofing around with it, seeing what they could, if they could make it work. The, the question is, well, why didn't the United States Army adopt this design? Well, first of all, as I said, to maintain a vehicle like a tank, an M48, M60 series tank, you really need four crew members. To properly maintain that vehicle and keep it running and secondly um, the Soviets were the reason this didn't take off well what do you mean the Soviets well unlike the French who stuck with the oscillating turret even though it was proven to be an abject failure in Israel and the Swedish who continued with their Kanban um, this vehicle the United States knew we were facing the Warsaw Pact and the Soviet Union and they like chemical weapons and this tank could not be sealed against nuclear biological or chemical weapons in any way shape or form because of the design of the turret and the way the turret operated it had gaps in the turret um, that air could get into and gas is would get into the vehicle and kill the crew members and Soviet doctrine was massive use of uh, chemical weapons to open up a battle and break through a line. So for that reason, among others, the United States Army never fully adopted this vehicle. But they did experiment with it. They did try it out to see what it could do. And <clears throat> in some cases, uh, some of the ideas are actually showing up today on modern vehicles with auto loaders for the United States Army, um, basically in the auto loading system, um, you know, uh, when a country builds a tank like this, they experiment with it, they poke around with it, and they find out what it can and can't do. And then they make adjustments and they improve it. Okay? So what do you got in the game? Well, you've got an auto-loading 105mm gun with four-round clip. All right? 
Um, it's not the fastest horse in the barn, and it's certainly, it's armored, but, you know, it has the same feeling that all tanks have. This is a medium tank, but the hull is that of the M48, and uh, it's weak um, on the bottom. So the ideal situation is to get this thing hauled down, and if you look at the profile here, it's going to be very difficult to penetrate that turret unless you're fire, firing gold, pardon me, okay? So, anyway, I took it into a game, and we'll see what we can do, but um, I, I like it. It's a nice nice tank. It's, it's big brother, and the next level is the T-57, I think. All right, that comes up next. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Tech tree, da, 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 da. And I'm on the T-54 E1, so yeah, it would be the T-57 Heavy. And all that is, is um, they uh, took... Uh, this tank and they added a bigger gun 120 millimeter gun and uh they added a little bit more armor so that's the t57 that's the next level up i'm on tier nine okay so <clears throat> we'll see what we can do and i'll talk to you then bye okay <clears throat> you'll excuse me but i am not familiar with this map uh, again it's been a while since i've played and these are new maps that have come in um but looking at the minimap, I can see on the top of the minimap, right about in the middle, there's an, a, a hill. And my gut feeling is that if I get on that hill, I'm going to be able to do something good. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to head off to my left, and I'm going to go and get up on that hill. All right. So looking around, um, maps are beautiful. Artwork is beautiful. Um, tanks are rendered accurately. Yeah, you know, I can't complain about the graphical and sound quality of the game. You know, uh, it, it's great. Okay, so moving right along, and again, with this game as in all games of this genre, um, most of your time is spent getting to and from your fight. Okay, so I'm going to cross these railroad tracks and zip along and go through the water. Yeah. It's kind of like the world's best ATV, right? And, uh, you know, the downside of a, a, a clip tank like this is that you get, yeah, four rapid firing rounds, but then, um, well, I broke my suspension there. Um, then you end up having to wait for a reload. So I come around, I'm hold down. I'm in dead dead ground. I'm looking to see if I got shots on these guys. I don't. They're behind buildings. I, I, like I said, I'm not familiar with this map hardly at all. But I do know how to position a tank and how to uh, get into a position where I could do some damage. I start taking some hits um, from the town over there, which means somebody is open. So I put a round into that guy and I put another round into that guy. And you can see... The advantage of having a clip, boom, 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 okay, and uh, they hit my track, that, nope, and then the artillery starts to chime in a little bit, AT-15 taking a shot at me as well, so I get behind a bush and I hide, <laughs> that's right, world of camping, right, so I hide until I'm not stunned anymore, and um, if I need to repair anything or fix any of my crew members I'm in a position to do that and I take a sh couple shots over there thinking okay maybe I can hit that guy but nah, nah not gonna happen now there's a light tank up here with me and he's spotting all these guys but they're behind cover so it's gonna be very hard for me to hit anybody from behind cover so I decide to move myself up take my brave pills Put on my man pants and come on up here into this bush. <laughs> you move like infantry, honestly. There's AT-15. I'm going to take a shot. It's going to bounce. I'll take another shot. And that's going to bounce. And then I'm going to bounce again. And congratulations, I just gave that guy a steel wall. Um, you know, it's just... No, it wasn't going to happen. Okay, and that's a very well-armored tank destroyer so <clears throat> at that range and at that angle I wasn't about to penetrate that guy 
So I'm sitting up on my little hill. And uh, I'm like, okay, what can I do? This flank's kind of open. They're in the town, but I don't see anything to stop me from moving down here. So light tank moved down there, and he's still alive, although he is taking some hits. So moving right along, and I take some shots again at the AT-15, giving him even more of a steel wall. And I decide to move down a hill. Now, there's no dead ground here. So I'm exposed, and I see a little hill off to my right, and I see a railroad track going down, and that berm might provide me some cover. So I'm going to move on over there, and in the process of moving over there, I make a mistake, and I leave myself exposed, and I take some hits and take a lot of damage. Blam, blam, blam. That's everybody shoot the moving tank. But I do get into dead ground. I go through this river and I bank up against this berm and I lo and behold what pops up in front of me is a Death Star so mm, if I pop over there he's gonna nail me his guns point in the other direction but it won't take him about a second to move over by the time I get over that berm he'll be pointing at me and kill me for sure so I'm banked up against this thing I'm preventing him from moving and I'm spotting, but at the same time, he's preventing me from moving, and I have such low health, it won't take much to, to take me out. And artillery does take me out at the end of the day. So, that's the T-54E1, guys. If you like playing fast and loose, hey, give it a try. In the meantime, you guys be good to each other. Have a great day.